Hello and welcome to Interact, our monthly session where we bring you a hot topic. This is a session brought to you by Reliance General Insurance and all of us at Autocar. And this month we are going to be talking about a really hot topic and that is understanding safety. Now safety, it's a very emotional topic, it's a very burning issue. Don't forget that in India, every four minutes someone dies, so you know it's very grim thing but uh, to say but by the end of this session uh, you'll have uh, you know several people who have somewhere been killed on the road and really it's a big issue in India because uh, we've got the earned uh, the infamy of having the highest number of road deaths in the world and what can we do about it and what should be done about it now road safety has a lot of aspects to it firstly there's a vehicular safety there's the, the roads itself and of course uh, the drivers and the overall environment and in vehicle safety, there's a lot to do with passive safety and active safety. And I think what we are going to start off with is talking about crash safety because that again has become a burning topic. We've just had the latest round of GNCAP tests. What does it mean? What does it mean for you, the car buyer? Should you be buying a very high, uh, a five-star rated car or not? Or is it overhyped or is that something that can save your life? So let's rewind a bit and let's look at a little bit of the history of uh, the crash worthiness in India. India had no crash worthiness tests really, it just had a simple side impact test which really didn't make uh, any difference. Then in 2017, uh, for all new cars, the new regulations were implemented and these are global regulations. The regulations specified by the United Nations, ECE, 94 and 95, those are the real regulations and they specify a frontal offset impact crash at 56 kilometers an hour and actually this regulation is global, it's the same in Europe for everyone. And by 2019, October, every car had to have or meet this regulation. Now what it did was it really weeded out the genuinely unsafe cars like the Maruti Omni, uh, even the old Tata Nano, really not very safe in a crash. So those cars were just gone and the whole standard of safety was elevated. But at the same time in 2014 we had Global NCAP come in and start testing cars and it went, uh, you had these pictures of uh, the poor or the zero star rated cars uh, causing a lot of uh, occupant injury while the five star car, car rated cars, uh, five star crash rated cars obviously much much safer. And that of course has a huge impact, very emotional, everyone jumping and saying that you know our cars are unsafe if they're not less than a certain star rating. But I think what we now need to do and what I want to do is really differentiate the difference between the Indian crash test which is a global crash test uh, regulation and what NCAP does. So I, I think the current crash regulation which every Indian car has to meet has dramatically raised the level of safety. Yes, it is the minimal level of safety but I was just talking to David Ward of Global NCAP and he himself admits that this has really heightened the level of safety. What it has done is it has made body structures a lot stiffer. It has even shown the importance of having a, a, a driver side airbag. Uh, of course, passenger side airbag is not there. We'll come to that later but overall cars have become Come much much safer than they were before but this is a minimum level of safety what global NCAP has come and done is they have increased the stringency of the tests a much tougher test instead of 56 kilometers they crash a car frontal offset at 64 kilometers now that 8 kilometer has a huge impact on the uh, impact on the vehicle structure the safety uh, the way the the injury criteria of the passengers inside and that is a much higher level and of course they've graded it from zero to five stars so clearly it's like you know you pass an exam uh, you you get a pass mark you can go to the next class but obviously uh, if you've got a distinction that's really what global ncap tells you it gives you the rating it gives you the score so from a consumer's point of view it's very very useful because you know which car is better than the other in a crash and of course on indian roads you want to have that reassurance so i think this is what it is so what i want to say is that Today, with the UN regulation, the cars are safe, no doubt about it, but it's a minimal level of safety. What Global NCAP does and the five-star cars is the highest level of safety, but in a crash. Now, you know, 
uh, what does global end cap do? How does it? It's basically passive safety. Passive safety is how well you can protect the occupants in the event of a crash. There is no active safety rated in the current global end cap. They have it in Euro end cap. And that is how do you prevent an accident? And that's what we here at Autocar believe is even more important. So while global end cap is very important, it kind of you rates a car of a particular type of crash. It is frontal offset. I mean, there's no rating whether when it rolls over, how safe it is, whether it's hit from the back. None of that is included. It's fundamentally the frontal offset crash. No doubt that is the most expensive crash, uh, the most, uh, 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 let's say, the most dangerous crash. And a lot of people have a lot of, a lot of fatalities uh, due to that. But an important factor, global end cap, the star rating. But quite frankly, it is not the only factor. And that's where you have to look at vehicle safety in a completely holistic way and that's where active safety plays a huge role. Now, there are no marks for active safety in global NCAP, which is a shame. Though we are told, uh, David Watt himself hopes that he's going to bring that into the protocol later and uh, later on. Obviously, when they start out, they start out small and slowly they will include a lot many more parameters uh, into their rating and scoring system. But in Euro NCAP, you have ratings for uh, ESC, uh, automatic emergency braking, and I think these are far more important safety items because the best crash is one that doesn't happen at all, and crash avoidance, especially today, is hugely important because the chances of having a crash have to be minimized because there's so much going on in the car. 20 years ago, the only screen you really looked at or looked through was your windscreen. Today, you have multiple screens to look at. You've got everything in the car. And the biggest distraction of all is this. I mean, just looking at your phone for a second can result in a crash. So what does active safety do? Today, expensive cars have a lot of active safety measure. They have emergency braking. They sense the car in front. They brake. They have a lane departure warning systems, something like a Honda with their Civic and City have a lane watch system, which I think is a very, very useful feature to avoid the crash. And I think these are the things which should be brought in. These are the things which should be focused on. Another part about active safety is how easy is the vehicle to drive and control. So that's where things like brakes, the overall visibility, high seating position, looking around, again, makes a car much easier to control in a difficult situation. Does a car roll over easily? Now, typically SUVs have a high, high center of gravity. They have more chance of rolling over than, let's say, a more hunkered down hatchback or a sedan. Again, that's something to consider. So again, the point I'm trying to make is G end cap is good, but it's not everything. And it doesn't mean that all safety, the safest car is the one with the highest end cap rating. That is just not the case. It is, as I said, one important point. And again, coming back to active safety, there are so many features which are already there. And I think right now, the most important safety feature which all of us hit is that speed warning, which just drives you mad beyond 120 kilometers. Super effective. That's what the government has legislated. But it definitely brings down speed because the biggest contributor to road deaths is speed and then driver error. So I think, you know, that's the sum up which I want to say is that finally, uh, it's avoiding the accident, especially in this day and age when drivers are so distracted with so much going on and there are aids and technologies which are coming up which can really alert the driver. They can help in a lot of crash uh, avoidance uh, situations. And I think in future there is going to be ADAS, what we call uh, Advanced Driver Assisted Systems coming in. We've seen them in the MG Gloucester. We heard even Mahindra is bringing them in and this will take sef safety to the next level and that next level is trying to avoid the crash as much as possible. So that's just a little bit of a sum up on road safety uh, or the safety situation in India and also one more thing is on the driver, there's that finally the driver is the one most responsible for accident because as I said driver error is absolutely the number one reason why people have accidents and normally it's because they lose control because they're just going too fast. So again for that, the best drivers are one who have the maximum experience, who really know how to read our road conditions, those who can develop that sixth sense to understand what's happening around them and keep a wide safety margin and a wide berth from any idiot who's going to cross your path. So that's basically my take on, on, on the safety issues. And uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, just take a few questions over here where I've got a question from Sunny, where he's asking me, 
what do they mean when they say a vehicle has an unstable frame or body shell during a crash? Basically what it means is that uh, the vehicle does not meet a basic level of, it does not withstand a basic crash, means a lot of intrusion into the cabin area which can be fatal. But again talking to David Ward, what he did say is that with the UN regulation 56, body structure has, had, has been beefed up a lot. And with a passenger side airbag and these regulations, you can really step out unscathed from a lot of crashes. Uh, Stalin's question is, are the ABS and other active safety systems present in all mass market cars the same in terms of quality of hardware and algorithms? Also, how much does high tensile, uh, high strength steel help in making a car? So good question, I mean ABS is uh, really just the hardware but then finally it is the software uh, which makes the ABS work well, uh, is, it, is it, does it act too quickly, sometimes you do not want that, I mean is it fast pulsing right till the end, obviously these things vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and each one has their level of expertise. So clearly you know all of them are not the same. How much does high strength steel help in making a car safer? It definitely does, but it is uh, high strength steel or high tensile steel is used uh, in the app it to kind of compensate for weight. Typically you can make a car stronger with a lot more steel, but that increases the weight which you do not want. So to compensate for that you use high tensile steel. The downside of that is it is very expensive and a lot of manufacturers use that very judicially, judiciously and it is more in the higher, uh, in the more expensive cars. Um, we have got uh, Saurav who is asking a, a question on driving. I live in an area where it rains uh, heavily. Could you share some driving tips to help avoid aquaplaning and also name features which could prevent it? Well, it is very simple aquaplaning. The only way to stop uh, aquaplaning is to slow down immediately because it is a function of speed. Uh, the fact that the tyres cannot pump out the water from the tyre grooves fast enough where you then start riding on a film of water and there is a complete loss of steering control. But again uh, the only feature you can have is your tyres have to be in top shape, they have to be practically new, uh, the maximum uh, tread depth to pump out all that water, <coughs> that is what it is. So basically speed and good tyres to avoid aquaplaning. <coughs> Uh, Vishal is asking a question which is better a car with 6 airbags but bad quill quality or a car with 2 airbags but with uh, good build quality. Now by build quality I would imagine a st strong body structure. I think I would said that earlier, I think the, the strength of the body structure is core because with a weak body structure you can have all the airbags but if the steering is going to come into you or uh, you know there is other deformation, it is not going to help. So obviously I would say 2 airbags with a good uh, body structure. Sankit is asking a question, how do crash test agencies acquire cars for test? Are they sent to them by the manufacturers or do they have to buy them? Well, it is uh, very interesting because uh, you know what Global NCAP is doing in India, it is a bit of both. Uh, you have, they, they pick, they have a budget so they pick up cars from the market uh, on their own, they buy the, buy the cars and what they do is they buy the base variant because uh, that is their protocol uh, and uh, that also has caused a little bit of, of, of an issue. Uh, whereas uh, certain manufacturers like Tata and Mahindra, they do sponsored tests in which case uh, they pay NCAP to test their cars. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, they, they try and meet the NCAP protocol as much as possible. So the base variants again would have airbags even for the passenger side uh, because they want to get the good rating. For them, it is a very strong to be honest a marketing thing and it is actually working especially in the case of Tata Motors if you see the way the sales are going. One of the factors is people are perceiving it to be a safe and strong car. So I think for them uh, for uh, it has been great marketing, it has really worked and of course there is the whole emotional side to it. So uh, it is a bit of both. But I think what is interesting to note is that what we have seen is that Mahindra has uh, discontinued the AX or the base version of the Thar. I think uh, we, th we think it is probably because of NCAP because if you have side facing seats going to and, and no roll bar is going to be very difficult uh, to uh, get a good to, to have got that 4 star rating. So that 4 star rating was on a car with airbags on both sides whereas the Espresso it had only a passenger side airbag. Now Espresso did not do too well, it got a 0 star rating. Uh, again it was the base variant without the airbag. Now the argument here is that that is not the best selling one 
you know their best selling one is with an airbag could it have done better with an airbag possibly yes but you know it might have got a two star rating but clearly i think what is clear is that maruti is happy with the minimum safety standard which is the un ec 94 and 95 as i said it's not unsafe it's safe it's just that going to a different standard makes cars safer so um uh other question which sami has asked is how stringent is global uh, ncap compared to the euro ncap test well the euro ncap test is uh, far more comprehensive and i think what i like about the euro ncap test is that they take active safety parameters into account there's esc there's electronic stability control which is a big factor you get points for that that's completely missing in global ncap right now as i said and it will go to the uh, but uh, the uh, ncap have kind of said that they will introduce it later on maybe by the end of the year so euro ncap far more comprehensive of course <coughs> europe is a more evolved market uh it's a market where people want to pay more for safety whereas in india that's really not the case so quite honestly manufacturers and even global ncap are kind of tailoring a certain regulation certain standards in keeping in mind the indian market conditions uh ravi's question and i think we've answered this how important are features such as electronic stability control traction control and hill hold assist of course very important because as i said you know especially in in high uh, in vehicle to the high center of gravity uh, to avoid things like rollovers to avoid losing control these things make a big difference but i think going forward uh, what i would like to see is things like automatic emergency braking because as i said you know you're constantly taking your eyes off the road for a small thing one guy just breaks in front of you and you know you can immediately just go into him and just that simple feature even an alarm would just help you avoid that crash so i can't stress enough crash avoidance is what we are looking at uh angel is asking don't you think ncap rating should be made mandatory for all cars sold in india well you know i think what people don't realize is that we already have a mandatory safety standard which is the un safety standard and it is a pretty good safety standard it is the same safety standard that there is in europe absolutely the same it's just that the end cap is higher there could be a case of having a star rating for all the cars so just that consumers know you know it's good that consumers are aware then they can choose and you know on that uh, you have to be quite holistic you might have someone who says look i'm just going to be driving my vehicle uh, for about 4 5 kilometers in the city uh and uh, i really don't need a big heavy sturdy car i want something that's light something that's fuel efficient and well that's his choice you know and because that car also meets a minimal safety standard which is the indian safety standard so i think it's more about information i think people sometimes uh, get a little outraged uh, when cars uh, you know uh, don't perform well in ncap of course that's what happens on uh, twitter and in fact i had a very interesting i remember a chat uh, and uh, a, a, a twitter kind of heated argument of a uh, someone talking about ncap and how the people should only buy five star rated cars and then we found out that he was just a kid you know riding a motorbike without a helmet so anyway it's uh, easy to be very uh, uh, let's say holier than thou on twitter but i think in the end customers uh, you know do what suits themselves but it's important that they have all that information and i think that's a good thing about global ncap is that they are keeping the consumer invo uh, uh, involved they are keeping him informed and they have hugely raised the awareness of safety in cars very very important um taranshu asks uh, will a pedestrian airbag be made mandatory on cars sold in india in the future it is very possible because i think you know as safety standards in evolve that is the next step and quite frankly i think that is the bare minimum i think you need airbags you need a strong body structure and you need seat belts with pre tensioning and just these few things would really get you out uh you know could really make you survive a lot of crashes of course laws of physics in the end if you are unlucky uh you know nothing can save you just given the a uh, huge uh, uh, energy that a, car, a, a crash generates which uh, you know can sometimes be fatal uh parts got an interesting question how much does the safety of a car vary basis the variant hugely uh, it varies phenomenally because it's only the higher variants which have all the safety features the airbags the number of airbags the pre tension seat belts so that's what it is of course you know it's all a question of affordability but obviously if you can buy the car with the maximum safety equipment um shiram's question is 
uh, is safety still largely overlooked in India as most buyers end up purchasing cars that they like, not necessarily cars that are safe? Yes, it is. And I think, you know, safety, uh, people over here, safety really isn't given that importance. And that's why it's important to give as much information as possible on which cars are safe, which cars are safer, and let then let the customer take his decision. And of course, uh, you know, it's again, as I said, it's not just about crashworthiness, uh, which has been kind of, uh, you know, which NCAP has really highlighted. I mean, it, it's not the ultimate kind of barometer or the ultimate, uh, let's say, a stamp of uh, approval of a safe car. There are a lot of other things which go into it. This is just one important part of it. And I think consumers will soon realize that, you know, when they find cars that are easy to drive, easy to control, they themselves get a better sense of control and uh, safety. Um, VT Aras was asking a very basic question, what's the difference between active and passive safety features? So it's very simple. I mean, active safety features are those features which avoid the accident. So what is that? It's uh, ABS brakes, it's electronic stability control, um, <coughs> it's uh, emergency braking. All these are active features. So they kind of play an active role in avoiding the crash. Passive uh, safety are those features that when you're in a crash, is what saves you. So that's basically a body structure, airbags, uh, seat belts, uh, pretensioners, that is, those are all passive safety features. Obviously a safe car has a combination of both and uh, that's really what you want to make the car as safe as possible. <coughs> Shrithis has asked an interesting question, does weight play an important role uh, in making a car safe in a crash? Well, you know, the laws of physics say that if two cars of the same, uh, 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 two cars uh, bang into each other, obviously the heavier one will come off better than the lighter one, but that's more uh, theory. Today, there are a lot of technologies which compensate for weight because today you don't want your car to be heavy. You want it to be as light as possible from a, a fuel efficiency point of view, even from a cost point of view. And there are a lot of lightweight materials which compensate. So, you know, someone asked about high strength steel, high tensile steel, that definitely does. The rigidity of the chassis itself, you can have a light chassis, but a very rigid chassis and that itself will give you the required safety. So, uh, you know, in, in theory as a thumb rule, yes, but in, in reality, there's so much technology right now uh, that, you know, there's no saying that uh, just because a, a car is light, it is unsafe. That's simply not true. Just look at Formula One today cars weighing, you know, 600 kilos or whatever, just uh, they are just uh, super, super safe. And when they crash at those crazy speeds, people just walk out unhurt. So a classic, you know, example of a car that's light and phenomenally safe. Um, going to take some more uh, uh, questions here is, um, uh, let me see. Oh, we've got uh, another question from uh, uh, S. Fernandez saying there's, my feeling there's more than meets the eye with the NCAP rating. Do these crash tests determine total safety? Well, I think, uh, you know, the NCAP protocols are very clear. We know what they are. I think what can be debated uh, as earlier is that, is this the ultimate kind of uh, stamp of safety? And as I've said, no, it's not. It's very important, but a lot of other things. And uh, th that's the second question, do these crash tests de determine total safety? No, they don't because they don't really kind of encompass a lot of active safety features which I've been harping about to me today in this day and age is possibly more important. <coughs> Uh, Nitin's got a question which uh, is quite interesting and that is, uh, would a panoramic sunroof have a negative impact in case of a crash, especially if it topples? <coughs> well, go, a good question. I mean, you know, I, I think when people, um, uh, OEMs or manufacturers themselves design a cars, they take that factor into account because in any case, when you cut the roof, you're kind of compromising the rigidity and you have to make up for that by beefing the area around it. The issue is that uh, that part becomes heavier, it becomes, uh, you know, uh, and you don't want that weight at the top. Frankly, for me, a panoramic roof is, uh, goes against active safety because you're adding about 50 kilos in the worst possible place, which is right at the top. And that uh, increases your center of gravity, which is something you want to minimize as much as possible, you know, just for a sense of control. Uh, 
Krishna is asking what is your take on the India spec Seltos scoring 3 stars in global uh, uh, crash test while the Australian spec managed a full 5 stars in A and cap test. Well, you know clearly uh, it is absolutely true that today uh, cars are built to different uh, specifications especially in terms of passive and uh, active equipments. So, it could be that uh, the 5 star uh, Seltos had certain uh, active safety features which uh, are not present over here. But uh, you know uh, th there is uh, it is very clear that the standards are always different from country to country. Uh, obviously, in India people try and get away with the minimum standard as much as possible because this is a cost conscious country. But you know frankly that is the way it is. Uh, customers when they know it they have a choice and uh, uh, quite frankly you know they can they can make that choice then. But that is really the case with India. You know manufacturers are going to try and get away with the minimum safety standards as much as possible and that is why it is good to see in to a certain extent that Indian manufacturers like Tata and Mahindra making a kind of let us say a point of trying to achieve the highest scratch safety standards. Honestly, it is a lot to do with marketing because uh, you know to make the claim that this is a 5 star car is the safest car, I do not think it is true because it is just one factor of safety that is being taken care of not a complete holistic way. But uh, that is uh, each manufacturer has their own strategy, each manufacturer has their own approach of uh, you know dealing with uh, safety issues. And I think right now uh, the main thing is what I want to stress is we have a minimum level of safety and then building up on that is what manufacturers do and customers can make their choice accordingly. Ashwin asking a question is uh, should we consider the end cap rating when buying a small car? Well, you know I think an end cap rating is very important. Uh, it gives you an idea of the crash worthiness of a car and obviously it gives you some sense of security you know when you are going to go out on the highway if you bang into something or crash into something you will have a better chance of survival. But <coughs> again you need to ask yourself what sort of car is it? I mean does the is the car easy to drive? Are the brakes good? Uh, is it easy to steer is, and, and you know you have got to see your own uh, dry, uh, uh, expertise or skill level. Uh, you might be more comfortable in a small hunkered down hatchback than a pretty high tall uh, SUV which constantly rocks and sways that might give you a sense of uh, you know uh, you will not get that kind of sense of control behind the wheel. So, end cap rating is important uh, but you have got to consider other aspects uh, the safety aspects of the car and you know some people as I said might say that you know if I am driving it uh, in, in just the city it may not be that important because your speeds are really low. And uh, you know one of the not many people know that uh, a vehicle which has uh, the lowest fatalities in absolute terms are three wheelers because uh, they apply in uh, towns and uh, you know there is uh, obviously the speeds are very low. And I think there is another important thing about speeds which I want to talk about is the reaction time. <coughs> the slower you go uh, the reaction time you have you can you know get out of trouble a lot easier. Uh, clearly you know your reaction time of a person is about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds. You know, if you are travelling at 60 k's vis a vis 120 k's you know how much distance you have travelled in 0 uh, 0.4 seconds I mean you can do the math. And that really can mean the difference between having a crash and not having a crash. Um, so, I think uh, we have run out of time and <coughs> lot of uh, questions uh, coming in. So, I will just take one last question. Manoj says, how does global NCAP pick a variant for a test? For some cars they pick the base variant, but for some they pick the top variant and this inconsistency creates doubts. Very good question and I think uh, that really to me is one issue which I think needs to be clarified by NCAP itself. They say they take the base version, uh, but you know when they are doing the sponsored tests, uh, in preparation for that sponsored test the base variant also has the passenger side airbags. So, I think in that sense they are not doing anything wrong, but it would be nice if uh, NCAP could test a base variant and one with airbags because there will be a difference and what that will also do it will kind of educate customers on the importance of uh, the passenger side airbag as well because your star rating would definitely jump. And uh, you know I think that is something which uh, is a bit misleading because you know you are picking a base variant with uh, no airbags uh, or no passenger side airbag and that sometimes it just accounts for maybe 4-5 uh, percent of total sales. So, it is not even the most popular variant which is one way of looking at it. But you know uh, 
Global NCAP have been quite transparent on it. This is their protocol. This is how they do it. And uh, that's how it is. But yes, uh, you're absolutely right. I think, you know, testing cars or testing the most popular variant is something I would do because then that, uh, you know, gives you a better picture of safety of a particular model. <coughs> so with that, uh, uh, I'm going to wrap up. I hope you found that uh, interesting. Again, as I said, safety, a very hotly debated topic. Uh, it's a very complex subject. But I think, uh, you know, it's a very important subject and uh, I think what's good is that there is an increasing awareness in safety and, uh, you know, hopefully we will lose that, uh, uh, that, uh, that top spot, uh, a top spot we don't want to have of being the country with the highest number of road deaths. Let's hope for a safer and better future on our roads. Thanks very much for tuning in.